Okay. And hang on, I'm going to present. Okay. This is what I would like to cover today. Uh, just give you a general understanding that the goal of our session really is to kind of go through and just give you some ideas on how to augment your face-to-face -face teaching. Where everybody's doing some Google Hangouts. Some of you I know have talked about doing Blackboard Collaborate. That's all fine and well. You're welcome to use whatever you want. The Google Hangouts, as we were talking about, is a fairly simple, easy uh, tool to use. It's it's fairly robust. It doesn't have the bells and whistles of others, but it's getting the job done, I think. And I think there's some options for an asynchronous model. If you want to move some things onto the asynchronous, to just kind of augment what you're doing with the synchronous, I think this is what we want to cover today, uh, what we want to go through. So we're going to take a look at a number of different things in a number of different areas. I want to show you some technical things with it, you know, how you set up side buttons, and we'll talk about items and folders. We'll go through rather quickly how you create a narrated PowerPoint. We'll talk a little bit about internal, external links, discussion boards, announcements, and navigation. And then I'll open this up for any questions that any of you have and anything that you would like to do with this. So first things first. Um, Blackboard or any LMS can be used to teach, you know, virtually online for, you know, an asynchronous session and many people in the university teach online courses solely. Or it can be used to augment any face-to-face -face class. The terms that you were here are things like blended learning, the flipped classroom, you know, hybrid. John and Jim both do those kind of things uh, and they do them readily. And this is just an option, but we're going to keep it fairly basic today and show you some different things. Now, the key thing I want you to think about with anything that you're doing, you have to be empathetic enough to your students to help and understand, to help them to understand, you know, where they're supposed to go and what they're supposed to do. So you want to create an ease of flow and a consistency of structure throughout your, uh, throughout your design. And it's what I call a think forward approach to design. You want to keep it so that students kind of get into a routine. In other words, no different than when they come into your face to face class. Think about this. No two people teach the same. Everybody's class and classrooms are different. But when somebody enters your classroom, there's kind of a routine that they get into. There's a routine that you have, whether you realize it or not, and there's a routine that they have. And you want to give that consistent structure in any kind of an online so that they know what to do. You don't want them to go into your Blackboard shell or come into your course, if you want to think of it that way, and really have no idea where to go or what to do. If that happens, then their focus isn't on learning your content. Their focus is on finding out where they're supposed to be. So you want to keep it simple. Simple is the key. Something else that I will tell you is you want to keep it keep it light. In that respect, more is not better. Okay, more information, and it's real easy to do. Okay, read this article, read this article, watch this, go to this, do that. You can pile on the work, but that doesn't mean that it is going to ease or increase the rigor or increase the learning opportunities. So you do want to keep it simple. The idea of too much information can actually overwhelm your students, and that's part of that stress level that we've kind of been talking about, some articles we've been sending around. So more is not always better. In fact, sometimes less is more in what you want to focus them on. So let's take a look at a couple of things. If you want this handout that I have right here, and just really an outline of what I'm talking about, um, you can go into our Blackboard shell, and you can do that now. And if you go in under... Uh, the Center for Innovative Teaching. In other words, if you go to your home page, you should see probably the second, third one down, whatever. You will see something called the Center for Innovative Teaching Organization. This is a shell that everybody is added into. If you are not added into this, send me an email and I'll make sure that you get on to that. Um, but if you click into this, it takes you right into an announcement that describes some things. But if you look over in the left-hand side, there are other pieces of information that you can go to. There's uh, import important CIT links, which 
basically I just put a couple of links up to our website and to the FAQ page that we've been working on here for the last couple of weeks. Um, there is a section on faculty discussions. There's a couple of discussion threads that have been started and people are talking. There is teaching circles, which that's kind of a work in progress. And this is just a list of all the circles that we have, but we will put, be putting together individual folders for each. And then this section on teaching online. And if you go into the section on teaching online, you'll see that there's a number of lessons here. Uh, there's probably about five different lessons. A lot of what I'm talking about today is here, but in much greater depth. So if you're looking for some information, there's a variety of different narrated PowerPoints and lectures. Um, there's a number of different articles and just some different activities and ideas and examples of some things. But if you go to the top of the page where it says Blackboard 101, getting started with the basics, Dr. Fuller, that's me. Uh, if you click into there, you will find the handout that I'm using. So back, Blackboard Basics is right there. And if you want to follow along with that and just take some notes on it, you're welcome to do so. So let's go in and take a look at just a, a blank shell, if you will. And that's all this is. This is just a, an older shell that was sitting in mine that hasn't been used. Robert Morris provides a variety of different shells uh, just for about anything that we do or need. Um, every course that you have has its own shell. In fact, those of you that have courses that have like uh, sister shells or sister courses, like we have uh, field experiences attached in education to some things. So there's an extra shell. So everything that you have that comes out of Patriot or comes out of Century as far as courses has a shell listed with it. And this is the standard blank shell that RMUO has set up. This is the model that will be used. And basically you see everything that's here. Now, if you like that, that's fine. If you don't like that, you can change it. In other words, you can go in and if you click, first of all, you need to make sure that you're in the edit mode. And if the upper right hand corner of my screen, you see edit mode is off, click that and it turns on. Now you can go in and make changes to that. And you can only do that in a shell in which you are listed as the instructor. And in every one of your shells, other than that CIT shell, you're listed as an instructor. Um, the, the CIT shell, you are listed as students. So you can't post in there, but you can passively observe or interact and do those things, but you're in there as a student. So if we take a look at this from an instructor's point of view, there's several things that we can look at. So let's take a look at these side buttons over here. Some interesting things, you click into any of these, these are just empty folders, okay? But they have a template of things that they are looking to produce. And so week one looks the same as week two, but you can change, you can do whatever you want. So let's start with these side buttons. So if I don't like this and I wanna get rid of week one and I'd like to change that, I can do a couple things. I can do the pull down menu, I can rename that link. I can hide the link or I can delete the link. Okay, those are just some basic things as far as structure and moving around. So if I want to delete week one because I don't like it, now I have to go through, I think it's three different screens just to click it and make it go away. Okay, if however I want to add something, so if I want to add uh, a content area, all I do is I'm going to put that back as week one. Okay. And you can make it available or not available to students by clicking on this and click Submit. <clears throat> now, what it'll do is it'll put it at the bottom here, week one, and all I have to do is see where the arrow is. All I have to do is just drag it up where I want it to be. And so I can put that right back. Okay, so those are just some different options for you. Generally, what I do is I will put things, so if you come up here to this plus sign, click on the plus, and then it gives you a variety of different options. You can have a content area. So you're providing, think of it this way, you're putting together a set of folders on the left-hand side that become organization and structure, and that's part of that flow. So however you want to do it, you can add it by weeks along the side here, like Robert Morris Online has done, or you can set up a separate division uh, such as a content area like I do, and I just generally call mine topics, I don't call it anything if it's not there, it's a content area, I call it topics of study. And that's just something that I do. 
um, and then you can put everything here. It's how you wish to organize it, but it's, again, that simple and easy to do. So if you put it there and then you go into any folder. So this is, think of it this way, topics of study, week one, two, three, four through eight. These are all just folders, okay? And it's a way for you to organize. No different than you do on your own computer, but you're organizing it for your students and how they're going to be able to see and know where to go. So however you do it, if you want to put everything under topics of study, that's fine. If you want to put things under week one through eight or one through 15 down here along the side, you can do that as well. Now the thing that you saw me do is you can move this around any way that you wish. So if I want week two to come after week three, I just simply left click, hold and drag that where I want it to go. Okay, it's really quite simple to do. Okay, so that's pretty much basic for that. That's your side buttons. So now let's go into this topics of study that I created. And now you have several options. If you look across the top, you have build contents, assessments, tools, and partner content. These are your pull down menus that allow you to customize and build and develop this the way you want it to be. So one of the things that you can do is up under build content is you can create a couple of different things. You can create a content folder again, or you can create an item. I would tell you start off with items. In other words, if you want to post up a file, in other words, if you want them to read an article or you have a handout that you would pass out in class, something that you want them to have access to, this becomes a tremendous repository for that. Um, a lot of faculty members will use that in their face-to-face -face class instead of printing handouts, um, running to the copier to make, you know, hundreds and hundreds of copies of handouts. They'll post the items here. Any PowerPoints that you would be using in class, you can post them here. And then they can download them, write on them, print them, do all those kind of things. So in all honesty, this really is a cost-saving measure um, just in print costs alone because much of many of us just print. Um, you know, it's gotten to the point that I print very few things when I go into a class. Everything that I have is loaded up on Blackboard. So I can set down an item like this, and now this menu comes up. It says create item. Okay, what I can now do is call this whatever I wish it to be. So I can call this um, example item. Okay, we'll just play with that for now. Now, if you scroll down a little bit, this puts you into a text box area that you can just put whatever information. Uh, this is an article um, that I would like everyone to read uh, prior to class on Wednesday. Okay, very simple. So I put down what I want. Now, if I want to use a consistent kind of a font, all you have to do is now highlight this. And then using the buttons up top there, you can make this bold. You can make it italicized. And if you come over to the middle over here and do the pull down menu, you can do whatever color you want. I have a tendency just to use blue and I use a consistent blue. That's just what I do. You can do whatever you want. Um, used to be, I'll be honest with you, as far as colors go, um, when I first started into doing all this, I got a little color happy. I mean, I thought, oh, geez, I found a color palette. So I made purples and greens and reds and blues and blacks and everything in between. And I started to realize it was annoying. Uh, that's what I mean about a consistent structure in part. You want to keep it simple. You want to keep it consistent so that this doesn't become annoying to the students so that that's what they're focused on. You want to keep things simple so that all that is focused on is what the students, what you want the students to see, and that's to get them to learn the content. Now, so we've got that the way we want it, or the way I want it at this point. Now you can come down and you can attach. So I'm going to browse my computer, and you click into this, and now I'm just going to put that Blackboard Basics handout. And you go to your computer now, and whatever file you want to load, it can be a narrated PowerPoint. It can be uh, just a Word document. It can be a PDF. It can be anything. You can post an Excel spreadsheet if you want to. You can post anything that you have on your computer as a file. You can post that on Blackboard. But I would tell you, remember this. 
any file that you post on Blackboard, you need to make sure that your students have the software on their computer to open it. So if they have you know, the Microsoft products and you're posting Word and PowerPoint and Excel, not an issue. If you're posting some obscure product, uh, example, uh, John Zenchok and I use a product um, in some of our classes called Inspiration. It's a different product. It is concept mapping software. Um, they have to have access to it. If you are somebody who is utilizing statistics and uh, providing SPSS, they have to ha be able to have access to that. So whatever you're loading up, um, you just want to post it. So I'm just going to load this Blackboard Basics, but you need to make sure your students can access it. So you notice it's listed there, Blackboard Basics. That's a document. And now I can say permit users to view this. I can track the number of views if I want to. You can do some other things here about when you want that to display. So you can have this display from a certain date. In other words, I want this to show up tomorrow or I want this to show up until. So you can set those. So example, if I don't if I'm going to be away, but I want if I'm going to be away from my computer tomorrow, but I want it to post tomorrow, I can just use this as an option. And if for some reason you want it to be taken down at a certain time, you can automate that as well. Okay, so you come up under the display until, and it'll take that down as well on that date and time you can set. So fairly simple. Well, this, I don't want it to have any uh, specific parameters. I just want it up there now and want it to stay there. So I'm just going to click Submit. And once I've done that, this is there. It says, this is an article that I would like everyone to read prior to class on Wednesday. Here's the article. All they have to do is click on this, and now they have that file folder. Okay? Very, very simple. Okay. You can post any of those kind of things, any of your handouts that you have, as long as you have them electronically, you know, through Word, through PDF, um, you should not have any issue in loading up your files. This is a very, very simple way for the students to gain access to it. This becomes a repository. The nice thing about something like this is you can utilize this from semester to semester. All you need to do is copy this shell over from this course to your next course. So it becomes a very simple thing to do, and I can show you that later if you're interested. All right, let's talk a little bit about creating narrated PowerPoints. This is a very simple thing to do. It is not as complex. If you are on this Google Hangout, then you have everything that you need. So I've created a very simple PowerPoint here. I mean, it doesn't get any more simple than this. I just created numbers and did what I needed to. And I created, this would be no different than any PowerPoint that you would create in class. So you have your PowerPoints if you're using them and you teach from them, that's fine. You can now take those PowerPoints that you've got that are pre-existing. You can shorten them if you want to, or you can change them around or do whatever else you want. But then you can go in here and create a lecture. Okay, so this is what I basically did. I have four slides up here. I just numbered them just to keep them simple. And on the second slide, I provided some animation. So if you see what's happening here, this is my second slide. And I would be talking about point A, B, C, and oh, by the way, here's an arrow that I want to highlight something. And now I click to my next slide and I click to my next. Okay, that is traditionally how you would teach, and obviously not numbers. You would have your own content, your own graphics, your own text that you would use, and you would use the, you know, the full scope of, of proper practices for creating PowerPoints. That's all there. In fact, in our Blackboard shell, um, you will see that that information, I've got some tips information that's up there um, from a Robler book that we, had, uh, we use in education. Um, all right, so let's go through. And if I've got this PowerPoint exactly the way I want it, now what I can do is, and this does get a little weird, and takes a little practice to get to, but you just simply sit at your computer, make sure that your microphone, and I always do a test case on that to make sure that my microphone is working, that everything that I need is, but as long as I've got this, you come up under, you notice you got file, home, insert, design, transitions, animations, go to slideshow, okay? And now this pull-down menu comes down, and you see you've got from the beginning, from current. I would tell you the simplest and easy way to do this is hit record slideshow. And you see right here the pull-down. Just hit that, and this little menu pops up. It says start recording from the beginning. 
or start recording from a current slide. I would tell you the easiest thing to do is start recording from the beginning. So I'm going to click that and it says slide with animations and timings. Yes, that's checked. Narration sync and laser pointer. Yeah, that's there, but I'm not going to use it. And just hit start recording. Now you will notice in the upper left hand corner, you see a time box that shows me that I am recording this right now. So as I'm recording, we simply say everything that I want to say about this particular slide. Hello and welcome to my number slides. This is slide number one. Now, just a point, before you click to the next slide, stop talking. If you talk over your slides as you click, in other words, when we're standing in class, we continue to talk as we are transitioning from slide one to slide two. I would tell you don't. Stop talking because if you do, the recording doesn't grab, so you lose a couple of seconds of information. Uh, so I would just simply say stop talking and then click to number two to get in here. So now what I can do is I can go on and say, well, this is slide number two. And on slide number two, we've got point A, and I want to talk about this for a little bit. And then we got point B. I want to talk about that. And then I got point C. And by the way, though, the most important point here is point A. And you can blah, 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 and whatever else you'd want to say. So now I'm going to stop talking and transition to three. So this is slide number three. And this is slide number four. And then when I'm done, I say, thank you. If you've got any questions, please email me. So now what I have done is I have created, and you'll notice on each one of these slides in the lower right-hand corner, there is sound. So what I'm going to do is go through and show you, very simply, if I play this, now you will notice in the upper left-hand corner, you see a time box that shows me that I am recording this right now. So as I'm recording, we simply say everything that I want to say about this particular slide. Hello and welcome to my number slides. This is slide number one. Now, just a point. Before you click to the next slide, stop talking. If you talk over your slides as you click, in other words, when we're standing in class, we continue to talk as we are transitioning from slide one to slide two. I would tell you don't. Stop talking because if you do, the recording doesn't grab, so you'll lose a couple of seconds of information. Uh, so I would just simply say stop talking and then click to number two to get in here. So now what I can do is I can go on and say, well, this is slide number two. And on slide number two, we've got point A, and I want to talk about this for a little bit. And then we got point B, I want to talk about that, and then I got point C. And by the way, though, the most important point here is point A. And you can blah, 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 and whatever else you'd want to say. So now I'm going to stop talking and transition to three. Okay, you get the general gist of this. That now everything is functioning, everything is the way I want it. What happens is when you hit record slideshow, it not only records your voice, but it also records your transition. So it can now can play like a video and they can hear your lecture. Now, you don't have that interaction with them, but you are now delivering and giving them a lecture. This is fairly straightforward, fairly simple to do. If you make a mistake, in other words, if you, you jumble over your words, which I do, or you know your dog comes running through the, <laughs> through the room and barks, you can stop that and then restart from that particular slide. So instead, you'd come up and say, you know, from here, start recording from current slide. Just put your cursor on where you want it to be. Once you have this the way you want it, save it. And I'm going to put it, um, I'm just going to put it as an example. And click save. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is close this out. And I'm going to post this here as another item. I'm coming back to my shell in my topics of study. And I've posted this as an item in that particular area and I'm going to post that as an item I'm going to say this is a narrated PowerPoint and you can title that on uh, example of how to do a narr narrated PowerPoint okay 
All right, so now I can come in here and give whatever instructions I want. Please uh, open and view this presentation. You know, print a copy of the handout as you follow. Okay. And whatever other instructions you'd want to give. And again, you can change the, you know, the fonts and the, you know, colors and everything else that you want to do. You can do all that stuff in the upper menu. Now, come down here and browse my computer. Um, this is the file I want, example narrated PowerPoint. You'll notice it tags and it submits. Okay, now my narrated PowerPoint is there. The other instruction that I may have put in here is, you know, click on the click on the file and open it. Uh, and what you'll do is they'll just open this, you know, depending upon the size, and they do get large. Um, this is one of those things that you just need to tell them to give it a few seconds to download. Okay, it just depends upon their bandwidth and how you're doing. Okay, questions about any of that so far? Okay, fairly basic, but fairly easy to do. And the key element is keep it simple. Somebody has a question. I do. Can you hear me? We can. Okay. Um, this is wonderful, but um, the power is out in Pittsburgh. It keeps going in and out in certain neighborhoods. So some of us, or at least I am, on the, are on the phone. And when you say, go down here and do this and that, we can't see. So it would be very helpful if you describe where you're going. Okay, I'll do that. Thank you. Thanks, Dick. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. <clears throat> okay, so let's talk a little bit about um, some links that you would set up. So let's go back into this shell. I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong shell. Let's go back into my example shell. Um, within this topics of study, you could set up folders. In fact, that may have been something I would have rather done and put this into a folder. So you can set up content folders, things of that nature. But the other thing, if you do this pull down area from the build content area, topics of study, okay, if you do the pull down menu from this, you can see that there's a number of other tools. You can provide a link into the course. So if I want to link into the course from here, I want to call this, uh, I want you to go to um, week two link. Okay. And I can choose an item. So I can pull the item up here and I can find and scroll down till I find that particular item. So you'll notice when you click on that link that says choose item browse, um, if you choose whatever folder you want to go to. So if I want this to go to week two, very simply, I just click on that week two. And now it provides a week two link and I just provide whatever instructions I want. Please go to week two by clicking the link. Okay, very, very simple to do. Again, I'm just going to keep it consistent with the structure and how I'm doing the uh, the font, whatever you do, I would say keep a consistent structure. So now this provides an internal link that I just did. And that took me, that link just simply took me to week two. Okay, it was that simple to do. Now, it looks like I set that up as a file folder link, but uh, that worked. I'm not sure why I did that. It took me to that link. So you can set that as an internal link, and that becomes a navigational thing. You want to make things easy for your students so they're not trying to figure out where to go. So if you want them to go someplace, if you want them to go to the library or you want them to go to the resources, you've got those links here. So if I wanted to reestablish this and say, uh, I'd like you to do an assignment, but, but I'd like you to go to uh, the library website, okay, or go to the library information here. So I just do another link and I say, you know, name uh, library. And I look for the location, you know, and you click the browse 
and it's an internal location. So I can scroll down here till I find, here it is, Library APA MLA Writing Assistance. And I can click this strictly into the RMU library. So now this becomes a link. I can give instructions again, which I didn't. But you can click this. So now this link goes directly out to the library. Okay, and it takes you to the, the information of whatever that link is. So those are options and opportunities as well to do. Um, you can also send them out to external. So there's done, coming through the build content area, all you need to do is come down to where it says web link. So now if you click on the web link, this now can be taken to an external link. Now there is some place that you want them to go. So if I want them to go to, um, oh, I don't know, the RMU, RMU website. Okay, and we can type that down as HTTP backslash backslash okay. and just type in the website and if I got the address right this creates another external website and now it just takes you right out to so if I edit that, somebody has their open mic open, if you could close that. Okay, I think that's correct, www. Okay, so we submit that. And this should take it out to the RMU website. Again, I must not have it right. Probably help if I did www.rmu.edu. That looks correct, unless there's a space there. There is. Okay. Okay, very simply. So I click there, and it now takes me out to the RMU website. Okay. Or where other, other website that you want. And several of you utilize those within your, um, within your courses. Something else that you can do that becomes somewhat of a problem on the synchronous. We've had several calls or several contacts about people wanting to create um, or wanting to use your YouTube videos in your courses. Um, you can't do that. In other words, you can't show a YouTube video through Google Hangouts or through Blackboard Collaborate or through Zoom or any of them. It just degrades. The signal's not strong enough. It's just the bandwidth isn't right. The way these are set up, they're not designed to do that. On the other hand, you can provide links to YouTube videos. Now, one of the things that Robert Morris has set up within here is the ability to go out and look for YouTube videos, which will actually embed. Um, so if I click out YouTube video, now I can go in and search on something. So let's search on something on, uh, I don't know, golf. and see what we come up with. And we want them in English. Let's see what videos are out there on golf that we care about if that was a lesson that I'm trying to do. So I've got several videos here. Um, so I can view these here and once I've had the opportunity, now what you can do is just simply select this and I clicked on the select button and it'll take a second. And now what it does is it starts to load this up in here and now we can add the YouTube content and now I can provide a description. Okay, um, you know, please watch this. Um, video and if you wanted, you can also attach, um, you know, files if you wanted to say, okay, a lot of times when I use videos, if it's something I want them to watch for a period of time, I may put a handout together of questions and things I want them to use. So I could upload a, uh, you know, a Word document here or a handout or something that I want them to do while they're watching the video. Um, okay, and you can show the UR, you know, the URL for this if you want. Um, but whatever it is, you know, they can view it right here and you can provide all the instructions in here you want. Um, you know, it is very simple to do. You know, the same as you start to, once you start to set some of these up, you'll start to see how Blackboard kind of functions within this. And then you click submit. 
and it takes a second and now you will see that that video is here and they can watch the video directly from their blackboard screen from here now there may be videos out there that you can't find um, just through this method but you can through if you go directly into YouTube if you go directly into YouTube then you can click and grab that link and then put it up like I did up here with the external website with the same kind of instruction so that becomes a fairly simple thing to do as well comments or questions about that rich can you grab a YouTube video it doesn't have anything it can be anything I would like to see how you do that because I want to do that in my class on Friday okay well you but you can't do it through Google Hangouts or collaborate ultra you can't do it through blackboard collaborate all in other words you can't show the video in class in a face-to-face -face. what you have to do is provide them the link so they can go out and look at it so in other words if this is something you want to do in class what you have to do is take a couple of extra minutes and say okay folks um here's the link it's on blackboard i want you to go view this video great and come back into the room and then we'll discuss it um, the better way may be to post it ahead of time mm -hmm. and utilize that as homework. You cannot show these on Google Hangout. They don't come through. You will see that the sound degrades. It just does not play. Um, this, is, uh, this is Lou Swartz. Can't you uh, share your uh, screen? You can, but the students won't be able to hear it. In other words, it will come through very, very choppy. Um, the sound will not come through. I mean, you can do it. And you can see it and show it, but they won't be able to hear it and see it because the Black, the Google Hangouts Meet nor Blackboard Collaborate are set up to do that. Um, the, the signal just degrades. There's too many steps in there, and it just gets lost. So what you have to do is have them go out to do You can have them go out and do it now You know, while you're sitting there in class and say, okay, I want everybody to go out on your own computer, mute your mics, here's the link, Cut and paste it. Watch this. When you're done, come back in. And so it's like an extra couple of steps. So you lose just a hair's bit of control. But I will tell you, there are no synchronous tools like this out there that are set up to handle this. It's just one of the, one of the limitations of doing synchronous sessions in this way. Okay, now you send that link through that mashup uh, under content for multiple can, ways. Yeah, there's multiple ways to see. You can cut and paste. Once you do it, you can cut and paste. You can email it to them. You could send it to them. You could show it to them on the screen. You could actually post it in the chat room if you wanted to, mm -hmm. and they could cut that cut that link out of the chat room if, if you have that link and just drop it in. The other way is just to drop it like I just showed you right into your uh, into your Blackboard shell and say, okay, while I'm talking, everybody have your Blackboard shell open on the side. And now, okay, I want you to go to week one, or I want you to go to topics of study. And basically what I want you to do is uh, watch that video for the next five minutes. When you're done, please come back into the room and we'll talk. You know, so it's it may take an extra couple of minutes of class time to do that above and beyond. And you do lose a certain level of control, but it may not be a huge issue. Okay. It's just, that's a workaround that we have to do. Okay. It just is not something that will function the other way. Comments or questions about anything I've shown you so far? Okay, let's go back into this. And one of the things I'd like to show you is how you can set up a discussion board. Now, discussion boards are one of those tools that we utilize to generate interaction. It can generate interaction for a variety of things. You know, think about it. If I have a discussion in my class, I can certainly have that discussion here. And this is one of those things that I'm a believer that a discussion online can sometimes be a better tool than a class face-to-face -face discussion. Think about this a minute. <clears throat> if you've got people in your class and you throw out a discussion question in class, how many people actually participate? Okay, in all honesty, maybe you got a couple of people, those are quick thinkers or the ones that are fast on their feet they'll talk but what happens when they talk when they talk what does the rest of the class do they all shut up they all shut up and they basically look at this and they go thank goodness it wasn't me 
and they've turned everybody off. So the only one that's participating, the only one that's really interacting is you and the one student, and that would maybe be the student who speaks fast. The other point is, think about what kind of answers and responses are you actually getting? My sense is they are all very, very superficial in nature. You're not getting depth of analysis because they haven't had time to think it through. They're not relating it to course content and course material because they're thinking quickly. Now, I'm not saying that classroom discussions are of no value. I think they're a great value. But sometimes you want more people and you want a greater depth. This might be a place and a way to put a discussion online. What this does now is a couple of things. Everybody participates, you interact with everybody, and you now get more one-on-one. -on -one. Now, this takes a lot more time on your part. There is no question about that because you're now going to spend hours going through. A, a five-minute discussion in class may take you several hours to go through because now you're responding one-on-one -on -one and you want interaction back and forth. So it's a very powerful way to learn, but it does take greater time. So you kind of have to pick and choose and select which discussions and what you want and what your goal is. But let me first show you how you set up a discussion. So let's go back into the example folder that I'm using, this topics of study. And you could term that anything you want. You could put other file folders in here uh, like we did here. So let's get down through and under tools. Okay, the fourth, third button over on that button on the top. You see you got build content, assessments, and tools. You click to tools, and now you pull down and you've got discussion board. So click on discussion board. Now this menu comes up that says create a link. Okay, the first thing I have to do is create the discussion. Now you'll notice up here on the left hand side under the buttons, you'll see that you've got discussion area. This is where we are headed, but we're not going to. We're going to create a link, but the first thing I have to do is create the discussion board. So you can pick a discussion that is already there, but if this is the first time through, we haven't created it. So I'm going to click on Create New Forum. Okay, Create New Forum, and if I'm going to say, okay, this is Example uh, 1 Discussion Board. Okay, and it could be whatever topic or title or whatever is appropriate for you. It could be a discussion on, you know, World War I advantages and disadvantages. It could be on, you know, language barriers in the Himalayas. It could be whatever topic and whatever area you're teaching. It could be on um, nursing ethics, you know, whatever you're discussing. Any one of your disciplines, any one of your topics has discussions that you hold in class, so you would design that here. So now I put down the parameters or the discussion prompts or the questions. Uh, so what is the meaning of life? Okay, and you can put multiple questions in here. There are some people that would rather put, and I'm one of those, I'll put several questions and thoughts in here. Um, several of my other colleagues will say, well, instead of having one discussion board with four questions, I'll have... Um, you know, four discussion boards, each different questions. Okay, that's a way to go. That's a way to do it. It's an organizational thing. Uh, that's personal preference, okay? And that's just, you know, your own style of doing that. And I'm going to put just the same um, color palette and, and fonts and the size and everything else that I do. Now, what I am doing is this. I am creating a discussion and a discussion thread. And I want to make this available, and you can put the date parameters down, and you can put all of this other stuff. I would just leave the basic format here that is set up as the defaults, and you'll get it. So I now submit this. Let's go back a second. No, I'm sorry. I'm screwed that up. So let's redo it. Example and discussion. Now, one of the things that I do is I copy this, and I'll show you why here in a minute. So whatever the thread that I've done, I'm going to copy this. In order to copy through Blackboard, you can't just right-click copy. You have to hit Control-C for copy. So I've copied this now for Control-C. Okay, and I'm just going to click Submit. 
All right, so now what I've done is I have created the discussion board. You'll now notice that that discussion board shows up here. So, and it's highlighted the discussion that I just set. So I want to create this and go to example discussion board. Or if I wanted to create a different form, I can hit the create new form button, but I need to attach that. And now I click in the lower right hand corner, I click next. Okay. So now what I'm doing is now you'll see that it says create link in from the discussion. So in other words, in the folder where the students are going to be, I can create a link that allows them to go to this discussion board seamlessly so that you're providing a level of navigation for them. Okay. So all I'm going to do is then I'm going to just put the same comment in that I put before. And in order to paste this now, you hit control V and it says, what is the meaning of life? And I'm going to add a little instruction. Please click the link to go Okay, please click the link to go to the discussion board. And same deal, I'll just keep the same font structure. And you click submit. So now what's been created in here at the bottom is example discussion board one. So what is the meaning of life? Please click the link to go to the discussion board and whatever other information you'd put. And now this will take the student into the thread. They can create a thread. Most of them will know that that's all they have to do. If you want to put those instructions in, because uh, especially if you're freshmen who have not done this or, you know, undergraduates, just put create a thread. They know to now come in and they can put their threads in like they would normally. Okay. Um, the whole idea behind discussions, you know, this creates a whole dynamic where you are interacting at a much deeper level with your students. It does provide and cause you more time because in essence this becomes one-on-one -on -one teaching where you are interacting with the students one-on-one -on -one, which is why any of the online courses I teach usually Saturday mornings are the day that I sit at the computer usually I'm there you know seven o'clock in the morning and sometimes uh, 10 30 11 o'clock later uh, I'm still there you know, answering discussions and, and facilitating and, and looking, and you can set down the parameters. You want them to interact with each other. You want them to interact with you. Um, this is a way for you to see things and do things. Um, you can set up rubrics in there, but, you know, it's all what you're looking to do. You know, words, if you're looking to grade your discussions, that's a whole different thing. But think about this. You have a number of discussions in class, Sometimes the discussion board online can be a little deeper of a learning opportunity for them. You can provide more insights. You can give more one-on-one. -on -one. This is also something I will tell you from an evaluation point of view, from a teaching evaluation through like formative evaluation, you can see more because everybody has to answer. People can't hide in the discussion board. Um, in your face-to-face -face class, you know, once you know you throw out the question and prompt and somebody else answers, they go, Thank goodness it wasn't me, and now they tune it out, they turn it off, and they're not engaged. But in the online discussion, everybody has to engage. So this is just something different than you can do. Um, the purpose and goal of this is depending upon what you want it to be. You know, there's a variety of different types of courses. If you want them to be showing you work that they've done, that's a place they can do it. If you want them to get deeper into a concept, you can ask them to go in, read something, and then take what they've done, analyze that reading, and synthesize a concept into their own area. Um, you can have them just go through and do some rote memorization or show you something, or maybe you give an assignment where you ask them to create something, and you have them post it, and now you can give them feedback you know, in a discussion form where everybody else can see. Any of those kind of things that you would do in class, this is something that you could consider doesn't have to be, but it's something that may be of value to you. Questions about the discussion board? In fact, in all honesty, we could spend an entire couple of hours talking about discussion board facilitation, uh, talking about discussion board design, not just the technical of how you get it up, but how you create your questions and what you're doing with that. Um, last thing I want to show you, and this is how you go in and you create an announcement. 
Okay, because a lot of times your students are going to enter in and one of the first things they'll look for is an announcement from you. This is no different than how you would set and structure uh, your classroom. You would go in and start saying, okay, does anybody have any questions? Or here's what we're going to do today. Or this is what I want to... The way you would talk to your students is also just instructions. So think about that. And this becomes the empathetic part of teaching online or moving things to an online for augmentation of your face-to-face. -face. And that's a level of clarity. And it's clarity in what you type. So you can go in and click on the announcements on the left-hand button section or left-hand link section. And now you come into this menu that says announcement. A new announcement appears directly below. You can say create announcement. Okay. Create that and you just click that create announcement button and the same little menu format comes up here. So you can say you know, whatever you want to call this example announcement. Um, you know, whatever the date is, March um, 30th, 2020. And you can come down and put whatever announcement you want. Welcome to the example course. Uh, in this lesson, you know, blah, 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 blah. Whatever you want to type in there, whatever information you want to tell them. Now, once you've done that, and I do the same thing as I did before, I always keep the same text and keep the same whatever's that I'm going to have here. Um, and then what you do is scroll down below and you will see something called course link. This is a way of providing a navigation and a flow in that think forward type lesson. And I give them instruction, please go to topics of study, please go to week one, or you can click the link. This is what you're providing is you're providing a link. So come down here where it says course link and click the browse button. This now will give you a picture of every file folder that is in your list in this particular course. So I want them to go to topics of study Okay, and if I'm going to say, you know, give the information up here, um, you know, please go to topics of study or click the link. Okay, or you could say go to week one, go to week five, go to week, whatever you want to add in there, wherever you want them to go. So now I click the submit button. And whatever happened, I go. Must not have created. Okay. Um, okay. So I click the link to go to topics of study. Click the browse button. I'll take it back down here. Okay. And then click submit. Huh. Wonder why it's not putting announcements up for me. Hmm, not sure why. What am I, oh, edit mode. I'm not sure what it's doing. Rick, I think, what it's am I Rick doing? Because the course isn't available, available to students. Oh, that's probably right. Okay. So let's do it over here and I'll show you in this one. So this is available. So let's go up under announcements here <clears throat> and I'm going to say create announcement. Okay. And this is example announcement, March 30th. Okay. And uh, please go to um, teaching online. Okay. Same kind of deal as before and click the location up oh, there it is teaching online that's the link i want to go to click submit and that was exactly it john thank you very much so this now provides a link here and you see this link says course link if you click on if you have the student click on that and that takes you right into that file folder. So it's just a matter of providing the navigation that you need and navigation that you want with that.
Okay. My apologies about that. I didn't realize I was in a shell that wasn't open or wasn't active. So questions that you have on anything. Is there is anything else that you would like to see or you would like to talk about? I will take that as a no. And I am going to stop recording then.